notes on 10.2, graphing parametric equations and eliminating the parameter. So in algebra, equations are graphed in two variables, x and y. Now we will graph equations with x, y, and t, a third variable, t, um, um, or with x, y, and theta. Um, where x and y are expressed independently in terms of t or theta. The third variable, t or theta, is called the parameter, and the separate equations are called parametric equations. So let's start off with something um, uh, that we can recognize, y equals 2x plus 1. So here uh, we have an equation um, in terms of x and y, but this only provides information about the path of the graph. Um, parametric equations um, can further provide more information about our graph. Um, it will provide information about the speed at which this graph is being uh, traced out or drawn out, and also the direction at which this path is or this graph is getting traced out. Right, without a calculator, um, it says make a table, uh, this is example one here, sketch a curve and indicate the direction of your graph. Then we're going to try and eliminate the parameter and verify our calculation. Uh, uh, verify in our calculator. Well, in our calculator we can um, plug this in, but we can also do this by hand. So he here we have a set of parametric equations: one in terms of x, um, one uh, and as y with uh, a function with respect to t, and in our uh, bounds between negative two and three. So um, what we can do is we can just start off creating a table of values with t, x, and y as our variables. And we know our bounds for t is between negative 2 and 3, so we can just list those out from negative 2 to 3. And then just one at a time, just plug negative 2 in for the respective t values to find the values of x and y. So plug in negative 2, we get 0 or negative 1. Plug negative 1. Um, for t, and we get our x and y values, so on and so forth. And then from there, we can plot all those ordered pairs in order. And then we can draw um, arrows to indicate the direction that this graph is getting traced out. And so um, our next step is to determine um, what is the, the domain. So the domain um, will be where... Um, uh, the highest and the lowest y value is going to be. So the highest uh, y value is going to be at 1.5, and the lowest y value is going to be at negative 1. All right. And when we solve this equation here, um, uh, the reason why we did this is because y is the uh, independent variable. Um, when we eliminate the parameter, we're essentially solving um, the system of equation. We're just um, so the first thing we can do is we can solve for t. So if we solve for t, easiest one to solve for is the y is equal to t over two. So if we solve for t, t is equal to two y. Then we make our substitution in for the x equation. So we get x equals four y squared minus four. So that's why uh, four y squared minus four is not a function. Um, it's going to be a parabola that opens sideways to the right. So our domain is in terms of our independent variable, which is y, lowest to highest y value from negative 1 to 1.5. So what do we notice about this graph here? Oh, um, and if we plug this in our um, calculator here, and you want to make sure that you are in parametric mode uh, when, you, when you enter this in your calculator. So in your calculator, you simply go to mode and... Uh, select PAR for parametric, and then uh, you'll get your um, uh, first set of parametric equations in terms of x uh, as x equals, and the second one as y equals. When we plug this in, um, we're going to see that this will produce the same graph as this in the same direction. However, it is sketching the graph out in a smaller time period. And because it's sketching this uh, through a smaller time period, it's going to have to travel at a greater speed. Okay. Uh, the same thing will, will apply for the second equation as well. So rectangular equations on restricted intervals will show the path. Um, 
parametric equations uh, will show the path and the speed and the direction. So it will provide more information about the graph um, uh, than a rectangular equation would. Okay, let's look at a couple of examples here. Example two, without a calculator, make a table, sketch a curve indicating the direction of your graph, then eliminate the parameter. So first off, let's look for our domain. Our domain will be the shared domain. Um, so basically, we're looking for the more restrictive of these two domains. Um, so first, uh, for the y, the domain is that t cannot be equal to negative 1. That's the only restriction. But for this equation, um, not only can the denominator not be 0, but um, this is under a square root, so we can't have this be a negative value either. So our t has to be greater than negative 1. So between these two, the more restrictive is going to be greater than negative 1, so our domain t is greater than negative 1. We can sketch our graph. Um, well, we know our domain is greater than negative 1, so we can just go ahead and pick some points um, that will fit into, um, that will allow us to graph this easily. So if I plug in 0, I'll get 1 and 0. And for, um, if I plug in 0 for t, I'll get 1 and 0. Um, I have a square root here, so we can pick some values without a calculator that will make things easier easier for us to graph. So if I plug in 3, I'll get 1 half, and 3 will give me 3 fourths. 8 for x will give me 1 third. All right, 1 over uh, 9, square root of 9 is 3, and then 8 ninths and 15 will produce 1 fourth and 15 sixteenths. And so that will give us this portion of the graph. Right, where we're getting closer and closer to 1. And we see that if we find the limit of t over t plus 1, as t approaches infinity, that will get us to 1. So we know that it's get closer and closer to 1, but never reach it. We look at these y values, we'll get closer to 1 without reaching it, so we put an open circle here. Okay. However, there's a gap between 0 and negative 1. We know the graph can never be negative 1. However, there are some values we can test, so let's just pick, pick an easy decimal there, easy fraction, negative 1 half. If I plug negative 1 half, I'll get square root of 2, negative 1. And if I ch keep on choosing values closer to 0, the y values will get small, will get um, um, move more in the negative direction. Um, so we see that the direction of the graph as t increases will be moving in this direction. Okay? So we have the direction, and now we can write our, we can try to eliminate the parameter. So the limited parameter, we can try and solve for t. So for this one, let's we can do cross product here. t plus 1 times y is equal to t. Um, uh, switch, uh, distribute the t through, and then move the y over to combine. ty minus, uh, I'm sorry, move the t over to combine the t's together. So we're going to solve for t. Factor out the t, and then uh, we can divide out the y minus 1. And now we can plug this back into our... Uh, first equation. Here we can multiply top and bottom by 1 minus y, but first we can square both sides to get rid of the square root. Distribute the 1 minus y, which will allow us to um, uh, rid of the uh, complex fraction. And then once we have that, then distribute through, and we get uh, 1 minus y over 1 is equal to x squared x squared is equal to 1 minus y, y is equal to 1 minus x squared, and we see this is kind of a half of a parabola that opens down, and the restriction for our domain is that our x has to be greater than 0. Because t is greater than negative 1, if t is greater than negative 1, that means x has to be greater than 0. Okay, last example. Sketch the curve indicating the direction of our graph, and then eliminate the parameter. So. Uh, and here we can choose some uh, values that uh, fit into our um, unit circle, uh, these special angles that uh, allow us to find the values easier. We know that there's no restriction with cosine and sine, so domain is all real numbers. And if I choose 0, we get 5 and negative 1. And uh, pi over 6, we get 2 plus 3 root 3 over 2 and 0. Okay. Uh, for pi over 2, we get 2, 1. For pi, we get negative 1, negative 1. 
For 3 pi over 2, we get 2, negative 3. And for 2 pi, we go back to our origin point, 5, negative 1. Now, this looks like an ellipse. And if we try to write the equation to this ellipse, we can kind of use symmetry to figure out that our center is at 2, negative 1. And our equation for ellipse looks like this, right? x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Our a value is going to be um, um, the distance from the center uh, to uh, this point here. And that will be a value of 3. And then uh, the vertical um, radius will be 2. Right? And if we plug in into our equation here, our a will be 3 squared, our b will be 2, and we square that. And then hk will represent our center. So um, we should be able to get to this equation um, after we eliminate the parameter. Now, uh, we do have something available to us that will help things, e uh, help things to work out easier. We have our Pythagorean theorem, uh, the uh, Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. Well, if we solve for cosine, um, in our original equation, we get x minus 2 over 3. If we solve for sine, we get y plus 1 over 2. And if we have that, then we can simply uh, plug, um, replace cosine and sine in terms of x and y. And once we have that, we can square both sides and see that eventually it will match um, the equation that we gathered from uh, what we know about um, these ellipses. So here, this will pr provide us the rectangular equation of the path of this, um, um, of this graph.